for at least one buy-in, if not for another. Right, buy -in. right. I mean, I, I sometimes I like to uh, uh, some guys like to have a lot of chips. You know, they like to buy in for twenty or thirty, knowing that they're not going to lose twenty or thirty. I like to buy in for a smaller amount because it it, it has a tendency to tighten me up. Sometimes I'll buy in for eight thousand or even six thousand because I don't want to. Now I don't ever want to get short enough to where I can't complete a hand. Right. So, but if I buy in short, sometimes it mentally or psychologically, it helps me because if I had if I bought in for thirty thousand, I might get a little bit too loose too early, mm -hmm. and I, I don't want to start off playing too loose, which I have a tendency to do. So I, I'd rather like feel short 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 stacked, so I be, become a little more selective on my starting hand requirements. Right. And I know that's just that's just the way I am. Some people want to buy in for a lot of money, so it intimidates people and so on and so forth. The other reason I don't want to buy in for too much. Is I don't want people calling up and asking me for money, and if I have thirty thousand dollars on the table, they're uh, going to go. Oh, it looks like you're winning. Can I? You let me have two hundred or whatever. I, and I just try to avoid that. So you don't bring an extra dip or anything. Oh, I do. I, I'm gonna. I'm. That's not all Keep I'm taking. Keep a box or whatever. Yeah, I have a box, and I mean, I might have some extra in my pocket that's so like a rebuy if I need to, uh, but I just don't want it all on the table at one time for all those reasons. You know, Fair enough. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit tougher now. Being somebody who loves a good mix game, uh, and you know the charitable folks at the Wynn and the Caesars have been nice enough to spread a very nice mix game with mm -hmm. Badugi induced a seven triple draw to give me some nice love live. It's, it's yeah. a beautiful thing to get more people game. playing. And we had dealers getting off shift to, to come play. Obviously not because it was a fishing game; it's a four eight game. What right. kind of money are you going right. to make? But because it was fun, we yeah. played till six in the morning three times. This is happening. It's a great game. And They're both great games. Yeah. I really think you're going to see a lot more poker players looking into more events. Now, I think this is specific for you for two reasons. One, do you think that trend is going to take off as we're seeing more Omaha players and a few others? I think uh, that that the way they did the horse event this year, they made that into the main event. In, in some ways on TV. They made it be the crown jewel, so to speak, of the World Series, which I was happy to see. And because they didn't make it no limit at the final table, and because they filmed several uh, days as opposed to just the final table, we got to see a lot of different types of poker. And I think that's going to draw some people into the game. It didn't hurt that, that I was the player of the year, and I didn't win, I didn't even cash in a no limit tournament. So that says to people that there are plenty of other games to play. You don't have to even play No Limit to, to do well at the World Series. So I think, it's, I think we're going to actually have some more people. I hope we have more people in some of these events. And I do like the fact that the casinos are spreading these other games. I'd like to see Badoogie next year at the World Series. I hope they have it. And, uh, limit or pot limit, Badoogie? Uh, limit. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd like to see that because I think it's a, it's a fun game. And you know, it's very addictive. When you sit down and play Badoogie, it's a game that you want to keep playing for some reason. It's very addictive. It's a lot of fun. It's very volatile. It's very sadistic. It is. It is. But it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a great game. I actually was thinking about writing a book on the Doogie and Deuce to Seven. I've played a lot of it. Well, let me pick your brain on that one because specifically, okay. uh, there is not a lot out there other than a short section in Doyle Brunson Super System 2. Right. Uh, and some random musings out there on the Doogie, uh, mainly highlighted, I think, the most Currently, the most known Badoogie player would be Todd Brunson, who mm -hmm. is apparently a proponent who migrated it all over the place, uh, bringing it around. I don't know about that, uh, but I uh, there I have not seen any information on Badoogie, and that's why I like the game, mm -hmm. and uh, I, that's why I like Deuce to Seven because there's really very little written on Deuce to Seven, and Daniel's chapter in, in uh, Doyle's book is good, but it doesn't cover a lot of the things that I think are important in the game. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I've gravitated towards those two games. I mean, I try to pick those games when I can because there there's, isn't anything written on them. And I think that the better players and players with a lot of card sense tend to uh, do better in games where there's not a lot of material because some people just can't figure it out on their own. And that's not to say that there's anything wrong with them, but they just like to read it and then they understand it maybe better than I do cheaper to buy a book than spend about seven buy-ins getting it right. Exactly, exactly. And I think it takes more than seven buy-ins to get the Doogie <laughs> right. But, you know, I think uh, there's a lot of mathematics uh, in the game of the Doogie and Deuce to Seven that people don't understand or they don't know. And it's actually a lot harder to calculate than, than Hold'em and some of the other games. Top two tips for Deuce to Seven triple draw. Um, top two tips. Uh, and you might want to explain it real quick, what the yeah, actual starting game is. Deuce to seven triple draw is a five card draw game, and you draw three times. 
reduced to seven is it means that you can't make you don't want to make a straight you don't want to make a flush because those are high hands mm -hmm. so the best hand is deuce three four five seven and aces are high so uh, I guess uh, the top two tips for uh, deuce to seven triple draw one would be position is everything mm -hmm. and uh, start with a deuce now that's not always you don't always have to start with a deuce obviously there are certain hands that you don't need a deuce but if you try to start with a deuce most of the time, that's that's a pretty a pretty important thing. So three, four, five, seven, eight drawing is worse uh, than well. If you're drawing two, three, a three, four, four five, seven. seven. If you're drawing a three, four, five, seven, you only have uh, uh, four cards to make a wheel, right? Right. And uh, you have four cards to make an eight, which might not be good. Mm -hmm. And, and induced to seven, the straights and flushes count. So they're yeah, they're high they're high hands. Yes. So you don't want those. So uh, that's not a good starting hand. I mean, it doesn't mean I've never played it before, given the right spot, given the right position, given the right razor or folding situation, uh, or on the button, or, or first one to enter late. You know, uh, those are the kind of hands I might play. But I'm just saying that that's not a that's not a premium starting hand when it's been raised, re-raised in front of you. You don't want to play with three, four, five, seven. Top two tips for Badugi. Oh, uh, if if you could uh, draw one card, virtually one card, or obviously. Uh, be pat versus uh, I see people drawing three cards. Uh, you, you, don't, you don't ever want to draw three cards in the duty. That's not to say I haven't done it, but it's it's not uh, it's not a good thing to do. And uh, so don't call a raise and draw three cards. No, you? don't call a raise and draw three cards. And then and actually I think in the duty position is even more important than it is it reduced to seven. So uh, play cards in position and uh, you know looser in in back and tighter in front. As, as always. Basic poker holds up. It does, it does. Uh, yeah. All right, now we're going to move on to the uh, random questions okay. section. Okay. Uh, this particular part can get a little bit odd and it can get a little bit, uh, you know, very normal at times too. Okay. So feel free to have a little bit of fun here. Okay. Have a drink of beer. I'll have a beer. We'll get you another beer or get you whatever you want uh, as far as that goes. So That's fun. You have any heroin? Uh, no heroin oh, no, right no. now. Oh, well, uh, you you short on the ganj. Okay. Apparently, a uh, loaded ran off with three okay. bags of ganj beforehand, right. so we, we couldn't really take it out. Um, all right, first one. If you could only have one poker game to play for the rest of time, not just the rest of your life, but for extending on time. ad nauseum, yes, what would it be? Uh, wow, that's a tough one. I, I, I might say Badoogie. Badoogie, all yeah. right. Just for the same. Okay, if there is a sequel to Oops, I Won Too Much Money, it would be titled, Oops, I... Oops, I didn't win enough money. Oops, I didn't win enough yeah, money. Exactly. What would be the topic of Oops, I didn't win enough money? Uh, it might be about some of the mistakes I've made in, in my life and in uh, some of the things I've done in poker and, and that kind of thing. Any of that relate around lending money to people? Yes, it does. <laughs> it, it really does. <laughs> there would be a whole like five chapters on that. One of the best anonymous quotes I ever heard was, the best you can hope to do when you loan money at the poker table is break even. That's right. And I, have, I haven't broken even many times. <laughs> so. Tough way to go. A uh, famous person, living or dead, you would want to play poker with? Um, I might say Gilligan. Gilligan. Gilligan, the, the yeah. actual Bob Denver, yeah, or I think Gilligan, uh, Gilligan has Gilligan. I think I could. I think I could make a lot of money off of Gilligan. There you go. Yeah. So, I, I actually liked that show a lot. It was a fun show. But I think I, I was trying to think of somebody who wasn't very bright, and he would certainly be a great guy to play poker with. Do you, do you remember him playing Maynard G. Krebs on Dougie Gillis? I uh, remember just a little bit. I never watched that show. The the reason I, I when I was a kid I saw it on Nick at Night and I always wanted a goatee and I was I was you bound and determined and, and I wanted a goatee and I wanted a goatee and as soon as I turned old enough to grow a grunge kicks in and every bastard in his brother yeah exactly there. exactly it wasn't fair uh, it's just it's kind of that's life. a bad break really it is it's not good um, a next question here comes are are plunging necklines a detriment to your game when playing uh, attractive female players uh, no 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 they don't they don't uh, if I'm if I'm looking at those at all. Uh, it's it's certainly between hands, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't really impact me. I actually I'm actually I actually like playing against women. I, I am very aggressive against women because I think most of them are more timid. Now, obviously, there's a few I've played with that I wouldn't say that about, but in general, uh, I'm okay with that. 
Want to name names about who you wouldn't say that about? Uh, certainly, uh, you know, Jennifer Harmon and Annie Duke and uh, uh, Kathy Liebert are three that I would say that, that it doesn't, uh, they don't get pushed around real easily. But there's a lot of others that I think do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's okay. That's okay. They can show me some stuff and that's all right. Besides that, I, you know, I have a beautiful wife, so I don't really need to, you know, it's no big deal. I've seen it before. There you go. Now, uh, Kathy Liebert's actually having a pretty good year and is consistently, you know, a winning cash player. Uh, Annie Duke, uh, a couple of good caches this year. Mm -hmm. Jennifer Harmon, obviously a very consistent right. uh, winning uh, cash game player. And then now Annette Oberstad, you know, yeah. 19 years old, coming in second in an EPT and first in the EWSOP. It's amazing. Uh, it's a little bit nuts. Now, uh, do you think the face of the female poker player is going to change, or what, what's your opinion on um, female poker players in general? I believe that, uh, yeah, I think women are getting more aggressive at the poker table, which I think they need to be. They're getting tougher. They're getting, uh, like uh, Overstad, she's, I, I played with her actually in Spain. Right. And she's very, very tough. I mean, she's she does not back down. She's willing to risk all of her money, she doesn't seem to care, and she's only 19, and I don't know how she got there, but I, I wasn't there when I was 19, I wasn't willing to go broke, she's willing to go broke and take risks and, and push her money in with maybe not the best of it, hoping to get somebody to fold, so I actually was pretty impressed with her aggressiveness, and I think that's going to be different by mo for most women going forward that, you know, are moving up the game, they have to get that way, otherwise they won't make it. That was kind of a derailment, but I like the answers anyway. Oh, did I derail? No, no, I derailed. Oh, you derailed. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I'm good at that. Remember oh, okay. That's, that's all right. Uh, more rigged, live or online poker? Oh, that's, that's uh, no question. No question. After seeing what happened, I've seen actually the, the video of the guy that played on the super user account and how he played, seeing everybody's cards exposed. And uh, th there's no question that online poker is more rigged. And un unfortunately, it's too bad. And it's even, it's, I'm not even saying it's stuff the sites are doing, but certainly I know that I could be on the phone with you and, and talking about our hands. And um, some people probably think that's okay, which it's not. But there's nothing really a site can do about it, which, which that's the sad part about it, because it's a great way to bring poker to people in other communities that really don't have casinos and that kind of thing. So I, I wish there was a way to clean that part of it up, but I'm sure there's other stuff going on. And I don't think the whole industry should be tainted because of what happened at Absolute Poker. I think there's a lot of good sites out there. And uh, we should take a break. Evidently somebody wants on. interruption there. Um, speaking of the online poker debacles and that, and that sort of thing, um, with, uh, with sites like Full Tilt and Poker Stars that seem to have taken things a little more seriously, I guess, do you think that uh, we'll see anything like that out of them? Uh, anything like what happened with Absolute Poker? Right. I don't Which think so. Connected Ultimate Bit. I don't think so because uh, actually these kinds of things are great in a way because I believe that although probably Poker Stars and Full Tilt have already taken very seriously uh, you know the uh, security of their site they're probably taking it up five or six notches would be my guess uh, to make sure that it doesn't happen to them because it's really a, a devastating thing to happen to your company and I, I, I don't know why anybody would, would continue to play on a site where this is happening because number one it's it, they have a fiduciary duty to, to make sure that what we're doing is we're playing on a site that's as fair as possible. Mm -hmm. There's some things they can't do, but they certainly should be able to control their own software. And uh, so anyway, I think, I think it's been a good thing because I think the industry is going to be much a tighter run and people are going to really do more self-policing. So I'm, I'm actually, uh, it's, it's good for me. I didn't play on absolute poker anyway. Do you think poker could have birthed some people like Annette Oberstad, uh, Matt Choppy K, uh, you know, many of these guys who've come off the internet and really hit the ground running in the poker scene, mm -hmm. cash game and otherwise, right. uh, without the, the advent of internet poker and nickel and dime games online and things like that? I think, it's, uh, I think it's been great for poker. It's been great for people. I know that if I, when I were young, uh, or when I was young, if I would have been able to play 
poker online, uh, I probably wouldn't have finished college. And in a way, that's kind of bad because I think that that's the one thing that I think is uh, a little, uh, it's, it's kind of bad in a way because I do believe